Hello, thanks for joining me for another video beer review. Yes, silly hat's still here, so that must mean another German beer. So this is Lowenbrau's Oktoberfest, fest beer for 2020. So 6.1% ABV, 23 IBUs. Um, these guys are out of Munich in Bavaria, South Germany. Of course, um, it's actually got a bottled on date, which is pretty cool. 30th of June, 2020, this was bottled. Wow, that's... Uh, so, I mean, they must obviously uh, produce a hell of a lot of this for the season. But, um, but, yeah, they're giving it a year shelf life on it. Not that it really matters quite so much. Um, although I did just actually have a look to see what, what was in this. I was, I was a little bit surprised. Um, but, hey... So water, barley malt, hops, and hops extract. So this is actually an AB InBev product. Um, it's part of the, is it Spartan, Francis Kiner, and Lowenbrow. Um, so there's three kind of, uh, I don't know if they're, all, I mean, they're all the same kind of makeup. Um, I don't know if they collaborated and then they got bought out by, uh, AB and Bev, whatever, it doesn't matter. So it's a 500ml bottle, it's in a brown bottle. Um, I just wanted to run past you a little bit about what I can find out about Fest beer. Um, a beer rich in malt with a balance of clean hot bitterness. Uh, bread or biscuit like malt aroma and flavour is common. Originated in Germany, this style is used. Use, uh, and we get it. This style used to be seasonally available in spring. Marzen meaning March, um, with the fest style versions tapping in October. Um, and obviously, Oktoberfest has been around since uh, 1810. Um, so, anyway, let's crack this beer open then. Um, I've had, I've reviewed the, um, I can't remember what it is, the Low and Brow Pills. I might know, it might be a Hellis, I can't remember. Um, I reviewed that quite a few years ago, drunk in a in a pub in Madeira. Um, but yeah, let's give this a crack then. It's my third fest beer or October fest, whatever you want to call them, or certainly my, the second of the the official. I think there's six officially recognised uh, that serve at October fest every year, well, apart from this year, as you'll know. Let's try and generate a bit of a head on this. I've gone for the, just for more for reviewing purposes. Just a straight pint glass. It's been in the fridge. It's probably been out of the fridge about, I don't know, a quarter of an hour while I was just doing a bit of reading and stuff. So it's a one and a half finger pure white head. Crystal clear, as you'd expect. Um, yeah, nice strawy colour. Yeah, looks the part. Gentle carbonation running through the beer and all that kind of jazz. Gives us a swirl and a sniff. Oh. Light spice. A little bit of a, a, a grainy type malt. Yeah, white pepper again, a little bit of spice. Yeah, it smells the part. Getting that kind of, there's a slight, there's a whiff of, a, of an aroma that I'm, I'm kind of starting to get a little, pick out little kind of notes within lagers and stuff. I can't quite put my finger on what what it is I'm I'm getting, but there's a twinge of of that in there, not not skunk or nothing like that, but it, there is a underlying, the quite pleasant aroma. It's definitely more grain forward, I'd say, than anything else. Definitely a bit of spice on the nose as well. So let's give this one a try and see what we get out of this. Prost. Mm. 
can't get it out of my head. Hop extract in a, in a um, an official Oktoberfest beer. Does that go against the uh, Reinheitsgebot uh, rules? I know it's goes. It's supposed you've got to have certain ingredients, but and it says hop. It says hops, and it says hop extract straight after. So that's curious to me. Does hop extract count as hops in the Reinheitsgebot? I don't know. Um, it's just something I just. I mean, I could have looked it up before I come on, but then it's like, you know. The beer would have been out of the fridge an hour, and you know, and then it's it's not the way I want to be drinking it. Pardon me. So there's a nice carbonation there, quite a bit. There is a, a there is a spice there, but it, there is definitely a more of a malt feel to the beer. Slightly sweet front end, and it goes down to this kind of uh, kind of a trough of spice, and then it finishes off with a nice, clean, crisp, bitter finish. It's not too bad. I mean, it, it's um, There's a slight kind of lemon twang there. The more my palate's getting used to it, the more I'm getting a definitely a, a more of a bitterness. There, there is a, that that spiciness is definitely ramping up along with the bitterness. Still very clean, refreshing. It's quite carbonated. I can feel it. You know, because I'm re reviewing it and drinking it a bit quicker than I would like if I was just cracking it open or whatever, or say I was on a hangout or watching the game or something like that. I, I take my time a little bit more, but just trying to get all the flavor notes like, you know what I mean? The old, uh, the purpages come up a little bit, but um, it's, it's okay, but it's, I wouldn't say it's, um, it's not kind of, not wowing me, you know? It, it, it's uh, certainly compared to the other two I, I reviewed yesterday, um which by the time you see this i might this could be wednesday's review but i'm reviewing it on the sunday um but compared to the other two it's not it's not quite up to that level i don't think um but again i've never had it before um i've definitely never had this one before so which is all good and it's really nice i've got another bottle as well just to uh just to drink at my leisure so but yeah, so the uh, Lowenbrow Oktoberfest beer for 2020, the uh, the year that it didn't take part. Um, I assume it didn't take part during the Second World War. But I imagine it's the first time since then it's not actually officially taken part. There was, as I said in other reviews uh, this week, there was um, a small, like literally, um, gazebo type um, market stalls. With, you know, with with all their beers in, in a spaced out kind of area in Munich, I believe. Um, but that was it. That you know, and it was all very limited amount of people that could go, like probably locals and stuff. Um, Hardly call it a festival, really. It's okay. It's, it's you know, there's a nice spice, nice bitterness. Um, so it is what it says then. Uh, can't make it to Munich this October? Question mark. Which obviously you can't. Um, so go, then it goes into blah, 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 blah. Served at the very first October celebrations, but as I said earlier on, back in uh, 1810, Lohenbrau is a full-bodied and multi-brew with a hint of spice and a tangy, a yeasty tang. There is a bit of that, but I'm getting more of a... It's more of a malt-driven 
uh, beer for me or grains, very kind of grainy, mate. Yeah, barley and I don't know what else is in it. I didn't, I didn't quite remember what I said. Uh, yeah, just barley malt. That's all it says. So I don't know if there's any other kind of grains in there. Um, so whether you choose to wear your Lindhusen or a, I can't even pronounce that one. Um, Lauren Brow is sure to release your inner Bavaria. Bavarian after the very first sip. I've never been to Bavaria or Germany, and it's somewhere I've. What? Well, whenever things get back to normal, I mean, I've been wanting to go there for years anyway. So another couple of years won't, you know. But back to this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's all right, it's, it, but it's not it's not wowing me or anything like that. So I'm I think I'm ready to give my rating now. It's okay. It's it's nothing crazy. It, 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 it's, it there's that white pepper spice kind of thing going on. It's actually lingering on the palate. I can actually feel it on the tongue a little bit. A little that, that spice residual, uh, which is which is quite pleasant. I reckon this would be great with a curry or something like that. Um, a mild curry, of course. You don't want it overpowering or anything like that. Um, Just give it a kick. Just it's you know just giving it that lift. Um, I'll give it a seven out of ten. Uh, so it's a three point five on the old untapped scale. Let's get the page up and running for untapped. Then see what they say about it. So it's had f this is all all years. I'm sure if you went on untapped that there'll be individual year check-ins and all that because people like to get lots of different beer check-ins on their untaps and all that kind of all that kind of thing whatever um so for the for the actual generic thing for untapped 42,842 total check-ins it's had 1,406 in the last 30 days uh it's had just over 33,000 check-ins then it's coming in at 3.3 which is a hell of a lot of ratings for for one beer um, I think anything over 10,000 is pretty amazing, but 33,000, um, 3.3. I'll give it 3.5. That's just a shade over 6.5 out of 10. Um, but I, I, I think I gave it a bit more benefit of doubt than anything else. But, it, I mean, it's it, it, it's quite pleasant. Um, but, yeah. I think there's better um, Oktoberfests out there. So, well, I had two yesterday. So, anywho, um, thanks for watching. Then, let me know if you've had any of these Oktoberfest beers for this year, the year that no one can go. Um, this is Low and Brow's Oktoberfest beer 2020, uh, 6.1% ABV out of Munich in Germany. So, thanks for watching. Check out my German playlist down below um there's a whole host of information about the brewery um links to their if they've got social media i haven't done it all yet but it'll be down below if there is and i'll see you on the next video cheers